Hi, my name is Søren, and in this video, we will take a look at the dope sheet view. The dope sheet view is used to display and edit the timing of an animation's keyframes. Animation is an iterative process, and the dope sheet provides powerful tools to refine your animations. First, we'll take a look at the transport controls. From left to right, we have first jump to the animation start, jump to the previous key, play backward or stop if we're already playing, play forward or stop if we're already playing, jump to the next key, jump to the animation end, and repeat. When repeat is enabled, the position will jump to the first frame when playback reaches the last frame. The timeline shows time divided into 30 frames per second by default, though we can change this in the playback view. The frames are for convenience to make it easier to choose discrete timeline positions. Animations can be played at a higher or lower frame rate than the timeline displays, and keys can be set between timeline frames. The orange diamonds indicate which frames have at least one key. The orange vertical line marks the last key in the animation, which determines the animation's duration. Scrolling the mouse wheel over the timeline zooms the timeline in or out. The zoom slider at the bottom left of the dope sheet indicates the current zoom level and can be dragged. To the right of the zoom slider is the zoom keys button that zooms the timeline so all keys are visible. Similar to panning in the editor area, Dragging with the right mouse button pans the timeline left or right. The current timeline position is indicated by the cyan vertical line and downward facing triangle. A new timeline position may be set by left clicking or dragging. Dragging in the timeline is called scrubbing and is a quick way to see how the skeleton pose changes over time. Hold shift while clicking or dragging to set the timeline position between frames. This is especially useful while scrubbing to see the animation interpolate smoothly. When repeat is enabled and the timeline is scrubbed past the last frame, then the position will loop back to the first frame, but only if the scrubbing started before the last frame. This allows scrubbing to be used on a looping animation. If this behavior is not desired, then either begin scrubbing after the last frame or disable repeat. The current timeline position is also shown next to the current button. A frame number can be typed and followed by the enter key to set the current timeline position. A decimal point may be typed to set the position between frames. If the current button is active, the dope sheet will automatically scroll horizontally during playback. This is useful when doing a long animation and not all the keys fit in the dope sheet horizontally. The animation's keys are shown in rows below the timeline as small colored rectangles. A unique color is used for each type of key. White keys indicate multiple types of keys at that position. Similar to the timeline, Left clicking in the key area sets the timeline position and dragging with the right mouse button pans the timeline left or right. Scrolling the mouse wheel over the key area scrolls it up or down. The first row is the animation overview row, which displays all keys from the rows below it. It will also display the animation's name, which can be clicked as a shortcut to select the animation in the tree. The second row is a bone overview row, which groups the rows for a bone. It can be collapsed by pressing minus or expanded by clicking plus. When collapsed, the row shows all the keys for the bone. The name of the bone can be clicked as a shortcut to select the bone in the editor area. Hold control to toggle the selection. The third row displays the keys for a single aspect of the skeleton. The name of the row can be clicked, and for a transform row, this is a shortcut to select both the bone and the transform tool. For other types of rows, the appropriate item is selected in the editor area or tree. Hold control to toggle the selection. 
Straight lines between keys indicate a linear transition. Slightly curved lines between keys indicate a Bezier curve transition. And dotted lines between keys indicates a step transition. No lines between keys indicates either that both keys have the same value or that the type of key does not have a transition, such as event keys. Note that overview rows never display lines between keys. When the editor area selection is empty, or when the selected items do not have any keys, then the dope sheet will show all rows. When items are selected that have keys, only the rows for those items are shown. This can be used to reduce clutter in the dope sheet for a complex animation. Once the dope sheet contains the desired rows, the lock button can be used to prevent the dope sheet rows from changing. The refresh button updates the dope sheet rows for the current editor area selection. The Select Bones button selects the bones for the current dope sheet rows. When a project has multiple skeletons and nothing is selected, both skeletons will be visible in the dope sheet. Hiding a skeleton in the tree will also hide it in the dope sheet. The order the bones appear in the dope sheet is the order the bones were selected. This order can be rearranged by clicking the bone name and dragging the bone up or down in the list. Some dope sheet rows are not associated with a bone, such as rows for events or draw order. These rows are always shown at the bottom of the dope sheet unless they are filtered out. A single key is selected using the left mouse button, which also sets the timeline position to the position of the key. Hold down control when clicking to select a key without changing the timeline position. Holding control when clicking is also used to select multiple keys or deselect a selected key. Selecting a key in an overview row selects the keys under it. If the dope sheet is locked when a key is clicked, the appropriate item for that key will be selected in the editor area. This makes it easy to jump to a timeline position and modify a key. Box select is done by pressing the left mouse button in empty space and dragging. To make a box selection that starts on the top of a key, hold control before pressing the left mouse button. Also, multiple box selections can be made when holding control. The filter button controls which types of keyframes appear in the dope sheet. When the icon is yellow, everything is visible by default. When filtering is active, the icon will turn red. It is possible to toggle filtering on and off by right-clicking the filter icon. Left-clicking will show the filter menu. You can select multiple items from the list by holding Ctrl or Shift while clicking. Selecting an item from the list will only show keys that match the selected type in the dope sheet. When current tool is selected, the keys will be filtered based by the tool currently active. Selected keys can be dragged left or right to change the frame where the key takes effect. If shift is held while dragging, the keys can be placed between frames. We can copy, cut, delete or paste keys. First we have copy, which copies the selected keys to the clipboard. Copy can also be performed by pressing Ctrl C. Cut copies the selected keys to the clipboard and then deletes them. Cut can also be performed by pressing Ctrl X. Delete deletes the selected keys. Delete can also be performed by pressing delete on the keyboard or by double clicking a key. Paste paste the last copy's keys at the current timeline position. Paste can also be performed by pressing Ctrl V. Transform color, attachment and deform keys can be pasted to a different bone by selecting a different bone before pasting.
Keys can also be copied and pasted by pressing Ctrl Shift while dragging a key with the left mouse button. This also works with box selections. Lastly, when using box selections while copying keys, Bind remembers the distance from the start of the box selection to the first key. When pasting, the same distance is then applied. For example, if I select this translate key on frame 5 with a box selection that starts at frame 0 and then copy it, then when I paste while at frame 10, the key will be placed 5 frames further ahead at frame 15, since this was the distance between the start of the box selection and the key that was copied. The left or right edge of a box selection can be dragged to scale the selected keys. Hold shift while dragging to place keys between frames. Scaling keys increases or decreases the timing between the selected keys. When used on the animation overview row, scaling can increase or decrease the duration of the entire animation. Scaling can also be used to reverse the order of the keys by moving the left edge past the right or the right edge past the left. When key shift is enabled and a key is moved, all keys after the move key are also moved. Key shift can also be used by holding Alt while dragging a key. This can be useful when adjusting the timing between keys without affecting the timing of keys after the key that is moved. Key adjust allows multiple keys to be edited at once. When key adjust is enabled and the rotate, translate, scale or post tool is used to manipulate bones in the editor area, all selected keys are adjusted by the same amount. For example, a bone has three rotate keys, 0, 50 and 85 degrees. Select these keys in the dope sheet and enable key adjust. Then use the rotate tool to rotate the bone by 15 degrees. This will modify the selected keys by adding 15 degrees to each value so the keys become 15, 65 and 100 degrees. When an animation has movement that is defined by multiple keys, Key adjust can be used to adjust the entire movement without needing to edit each key. Overlapping action is an important animation principle that makes animations look natural. For example, if the arms and legs are always keyed on the same frame, the movement will appear robotic. To fix this, the arm keys can be offset to be slightly ahead or behind the leg keys. When offsetting keys in a looping animation, extra keys need to be set at the beginning and at the end of the animation, and keys moved outside of the animation need to be cut and pasted. Key offset makes the process of offsetting an animation that loops much easier. When key offset is enabled and keys at different timeline position are moved past the end or the beginning of the animation, the keys will wrap to stay inside the animation. Also, keys are set at the beginning and end of the animation to keep the looped movement. Key offset can also be activated by holding Ctrl Alt while dragging keys in the dope sheet. Key offset requires the first and last keys to be the same and it will work on most types of keys, except for events. If the first and last keys differ or any other type of keys included in selection, key offset will not be applied. Moving a selection with key offset causes a new key to be created where the animation loops. If the same selection is moved again, the original keys are remembered and the offsetting is done without creating a second new key. However, if the keys are deselected and then selected again, moving them with key offset will cause a second new key to be created. Loop start and loop end can be used to control the start and end frames used for key offset, otherwise frame 0 and the highest frame for the animation are used. When repeat is enabled, playback repeats from frame 0 to the highest frame that has a key out of all skeletons that have a visible animation. The last frame is indicated by an orange line in the dope sheet. Looping allows a start and end frame to be set so only the chosen section of the animation repeats when repeat is enabled. This setting only controls how the playback repeats, it is not stored per animation. To set the start frame, set the timeline position and click loop start. 
To set the end frame, set the timeline position and click loop end. The timeline shows the loop section using green marks and frame numbers. To clear the looped section, click loop start or loop end twice. When auto key is enabled, a key will be set automatically any time a change is made. This can be convenient, but care must be taken to not accidentally create unwanted keys. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope to see you again for the next one. Bye for now.